John, or this is the time the sun comes up in Los Angeles, but I, I see a bright white light and he's here. Hello, John. <laughs> yeah, wow. For those who can't see Stephanie on Zoom, my goodness, they gave you the merry heart lighting today, didn't they? Stephanie, <laughs> yes. you're trying I... way too hard. You're a fine looking woman, Steph. You don't need that. Am I giving anybody seizures? Hi. Good morning. Oh my okay. goodness. Hi, hello. Nice to see you in your new home on the sun, Stephanie. Thank you. I uh, I am doing the show from the surface of the sun. Um. Okay, you have to play this for... Okay, my friend John's here. He's going to fight Bible for me. Here is, here, is, here is Representative Greg Stube on the uh, Equality Act. Unlike most speeches you'll hear on this floor today, I'm going to start with the truth. Deuteronomy 22.5 states, A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear women's clothing, for the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. Now, this verse isn't concerned about clothing styles, but with people determining their own sexual identities. It's not clothing or personal style that offends God, but rather the use of one's appearance to act out or take on a sexual identity different from the one biologically assigned by God at birth. Sir John Fugelson, oh. ecclesiastical mook of the Stephanie Miller show. Oh. Do you love how the one Bible character, the right-wing, crypto-fascist, QAnon Ghazi, terrorist love, to never quote, is Jesus. The right-wing Christians will quote every Bible verse except one of Christ. Like, that's the deal. They can't quote Jesus. That's why they always want to put the Ten Commandments on a courthouse, but not the Sermon on the Mount. No. Because Jesus is inconveniently liberal teachings, and that is the masquerade. These Republicans are to Christianity what the Confederacy was to Christianity. No. And if you'll give me just a moment, I'll tell, I'll break it down for you all, and you can Please. use this on your Uncle Racist. Like, Please. Like 10 seconds. Personal company, Jesus, go. And, okay, here we go. So next time you're in this debate with your right-wing fake Christian relative, you ask them, which which Garden of Eden story do you believe? Because in Genesis chapter one, it says God made Adam and Eve together at the same time. But in Genesis chapter two, it says God made Adam and then couldn't find a suitable mate, which to me as a kid, I was like, how many animals did Adam have sex with? Couldn't yeah. find a suitable. Was he like with trees? What my ferrets? Couldn't find a suitable mate. So God took Adam's rib and fashioned it into the first woman, Eve. Now ask your uncle fake Christian racist, which Bible story do you believe? Genesis 1, they yeah. were together, or Genesis 2, first man, then God took his rib and made woman. Nine times out of ten, your revoltingly fake Christian right-wing fundamentalist loved one will say, I believe God put man here first, couldn't find a suitable mate, so took man's rib and made it into Eve. And that's when you say, so what you're saying, uncle racist, is you believe the first ever woman transitioned from a man. Because they've never read the Bible. They've right. never that's read right. it. Right. They use the Bible just, just, just to suit their bigotry. And that's the beautiful thing about religion. It's a mirror to show how good or douchey the gazer is. Because yeah. the Bible was used to uphold slavery. It was used to uphold segregation. It was used to uphold discrimination against LGBT. But the decent, non-douchebag Christians have used the Bible to oppose slavery, to oppose segregation. Yeah and to lift up LGBT well, people. That, so it's the difference between their, you know, our American Taliban and the people who actually uh, want to do what Jesus said, which was, don't be a schmuck. Yeah. Uh, yes, he was Jewish. He would say that. He said, you're, yeah. giving, you're giving me, uh, uh, you know, spilkus in my connected gazoink. Um, okay. I love what Al well, Green did yesterday. I was just going to say, here is Al Green channeling John Fugel's thing. You used God to enslave my poor parents. You used God to segregate me in school. You used God to put me in the back of the bus. Have you no shame? God created every person in this room. Are you saying that God made a mistake? This is not about God. It's about men who choose to discriminate against other people because they have the power to do so. My record will not show that I voted against Mr. Cicilline having his rights. My record will show that when I had the opportunity to deliver liberty Gentlemen's and time is expired. for all, I voted for rights for all. No, your party's time has expired, you Republican douchebags. Right. I mean, less people, right. less Republicans voted for this than the last time. Equality. Yeah. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. This is, this is how they'll lose their minds, right? That survey came out this week that showed that 11% 
of uh, of Gen Z identifies as bisexual. Yeah. So we saw all this pearl clutching by the bigots um, because they said, oh, look at this. Hollywood's indoctrinating. Matt Welch. Oh, oh, this this horrible uh, thing. Hollywood is indoctrinating young people into being bisexual. And I'm like, that's not how it works. The reason why there was 0.3 uh, greatest generation identified as bi, but 11 percent Gen Z is not that anyone has been recruited. It's that uh, they're not afraid of being murdered. It's that people yes. are less afraid of being beaten, scorned, fired, dumped, or treated cruelly for being who they are. If you really believe that Hollywood is recruiting people to be bisexual, you're probably dodging your own draft. Mm -hmm. Well, I am. All, all I took from that is that I like my post-COVID dating chances. Really? What percentage? Of... <laughs> now that Dr. Nicole is giving me a face 20 years younger, I like my chances. But it, but it's I'm sorry, and what it, percentage it, of Z is bisexual? 11 percent. It came right. out this week. 11 percent. Uh, that's right. Problem. I like but it. But again, Freud, Freud would say we're all constitutionally bisexual. And that's why, you know, I've spent so many years trying to sway Stephanie Miller. With mm -hmm. me. Yeah, well, if, anyone could, <laughs> if anyone could do it. Okay. I'm, um, I'm hoping maybe you're at least confused. It's, you do you do make me confused. I just there's something I you know speaking of light. You remember? Okay, I've told the story before. But when I was briefly living in New York, and, and John Fico saying, and I went up to my old stomping grounds in Croton on the Hudson. I was talking to him mm -hmm. at sunset, and there was just you have to understand when the sun hits John Fico saying in a certain way. I'm I sure. Just, I, it's, oh, I was like, oh my god, you're so beautiful. Like I don't. Your lips were moving. I don't know what you were saying. I was just like, whatever. Whatever, pretty. Whatever, eye candy. I think you're confusing me with sparks, lady, but okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're both beautiful. Okay, so <laughs> speaking of that. the isms, I could not find, there's not, I can't fit any more isms on my shirt, right? Racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia. Um, Rachel Levine, Joe Biden's nominee for Assistant Secretary of Health at the Department of Health and Human Services, the first openly transgender person nominated for federal office, told lawmakers she would fight to improve health care access for all Americans and deflected inflammatory questions from douchebag Rand Paul who likened transgender surgery to genital mutilation. Oh, my God. A, a pediatrician, she recently led Pennsylvania's pandemic response as the state's health secretary, was the state's physician general before that. She is wildly qualified. And here she, mm -hmm. here he, Rand Paul just pestering her about genital mutilation of children, which is what he compared a person's decision to transition to. Um, he repeatedly asked her if she if he believed, she believed minors should be able to make decisions to amputate their breasts or their genitalia. Levine kept responding politely. She'd like to work with his office to talk about the complexities of transgender medicine. She deflected his misrepresentation uh, of transgender surgery as genital mutilation. And all Rand Paul says is, let it go on the record. The witness refused to answer the question. I mean, they're just, oh, they're, well, just ig they're ignorant and mean and just yeah and the meanness is the point marjorie taylor yeah. green wasn't just being mean to a congresswoman she was being mean to an lgbt kid yeah the meanness mm -hmm. the cruelty that's the point that's their selling point rand paul is a fake doctor raised by a real racist yeah. and it's no surprise to anyone what he did and by the way we have legal genital mutilation in this country for children if you want to get technical it's called circumcision, okay? Yes. Over yeah. there, it's general exactly. mutilation. Here, it's good old-time religion. Yeah. And, uh, right. I'm sure I protested in my own way when I was a baby. <laughs> well, <and> that's, <laughs> listen, if it was anywhere near that size, I mean, I just, I don't... Uh, oh, my I God. Can't, I, don't, really? I don't. I don't even know what kind yeah. of pants are available for John Fugel. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that was a fine. different moment with John Fugel saying, we were backstage, I'm going to say... One of the oh, first yeah, shows, Sarah. Madison, and oh. I just was just found myself drawn to his nether regions. I was like, just wow, wow, Tell John. all your great female listeners this, please. Spread right, this, and yes. you were just like, he, my he, eyes, he, my eyes are up here. My eyes are up here. He, yeah. he couldn't I, move I his legs because he was, he couldn't move his legs because he was cramped in the back of a, a compact car. That's true. That's also on that, but that's on part that of trip. my fetish. But yes, I, I had to go back for a second circumcision as a baby. It's it's, it's really awkward. I'm the big that that yeah. car was so small. They were like John was in stirrups. So it was really just it wasn't about money. It was just me getting a better view. Wow. Th this segment's going to some great. This is dust off wow. the shelf in the Museum of Broadcasting for my opinion. <laughs> yeah. people. That's all I can this is our Me Too Time's Up segment. <laughs> oh, listen, I wouldn't be the first woman to objectify John Fugel's thing. And you can objectify him, too. April 10th. You were the one that had to remind me it's the 10-year anniversary. You will not believe the mm -hmm. extravaganza we are planning. 
for the next sexy yeah. liberal virtual you don't live tour. In the past as much as me, Stephanie, but, but yeah, it's, it's really, really exciting. Well, and there's archival it's, it's, footage, so you can see what I'm talking about when John Fugel's saying. I'm just saying. Um, okay, there's wow. amazing archival okay. footage. Some of it, like a lot of us haven't even seen from the tenure, yeah. right? From the tour. From uh, we're obviously doing a bunch of new material. All of the celebrities mm -hmm. uh, past and present will be invited. It's going to be amazing. Ten year anniversary, April 10th. Get your tickets now. Sexyliberal.com. Uh, they're not. They're not on sale. Oh, yet. oh, they're not on sale yet. Oh, pardon me. Did yeah. I? Was I premature? Yeah, Tickets coming soon. Pardon Tickets me. coming soon. You, you prematurely it all uh... lathered up and be frustrated right yeah. now. <laughs> yes, I, I frequently am premature when I'm in the presence of John Peter saying. <laughs> Just sometimes, just even tantrically, before I even... You are yeah. regressing, what? lady. You are regressing. What did COVID do to your brain? I don't That's know. I'm so lonely. We discuss. Listen, this, is, so lonely. this is like some horrible human experience experiment that I can't be touched by a human and that I am forced regularly to talk to the most beautiful men in the world, like John Fugel saying. But just, you but I can't touch it. you. I can't. I, can't, I came you. here to celebrate Oreos, lady. I came here to celebrate Oreos for being so progressive. You that, said you that, just that. took off your COVID weight and now you have to start eating Oreos because they have taken a stand... Now, are they for neutral, gender neutral, Mr. Potato Heads, or no? What What's the Oreo thing? Oreo just, all, all Oreos did was tweet, trans people exist. Oh. Yeah. And a lot of my liberal friends were like, oh, look at you, Oreos, desperately pandering, desperately pandering. And I'm like, well, would you rather them be the other thing? You know? Right. And then and then Nilla Wafers came out and said the same thing. And I'm like, you better step up, Keebler Elves. I'm looking right at you. <laughs> It, 10 years ago, this would be inconceivable. And all this is, is a culture that is actually doing the Christian thing because there's mm -hmm. why the GOP is not Christian. Okay. Right. This guy, Jesus, whether you believe in him as a literal guy or son of God or historical figure or homeless mystic who got a lucky cult, whatever you believe in the book, he stands up for the marginalized. If you're the lowest of the low, that's who he fights for. Despised foreign minorities like Samaritans or the poor, prostitutes, lepers, um, this modern Christian GOP, they're known for going after the marginalized. Trans kids who want to use a bathroom they feel comfortable in. Trans soldiers who want to fight for their country. War mm -hmm. refugees from Syria. Christian refugees, not illegals, Christian refugees at our border. They are the Antichrist party. And that's why they have to be called out for it. Even if you're not religious, you can call them out for claiming to be Christian when they're really just using Jesus as spiritual camouflage. Yep. So I, I, I love what you're doing because they're doing all this. I was like, am I in a time machine? Why are we back? Where's the migrant yeah. caravan? Why are we back to demonizing LGBT? Yeah. Because they're terrified, they're losing, they have nothing to offer their voters. And that's why we have to chloroform Kristen Cinema and Joe Manchin and get rid of this filibuster. You and because I are now. totally you you and I are totally on the, the bisexual SWAT team to take care of the you, uh, Kristen Cinema part of that equation. This is one way or another, point. John Fugel saying and I will bring her yeah. around. But what this if another what bullet if point in the security? What's I'm sorry, John? Imagine the, imagine the Equality Act fails because Kristen Cinema I know didn't help end the filibuster. I know. The first openly bi member of Congress. I know. So it's yeah. like Complete Democrats. This is the moment. You gotta, you gotta be willing to break some eggs here, or yeah. you're gonna show up in 2022 telling us yeah. how much you wanted to. That's help. why she's exactly my taste in women. Just someone completely wrong that will totally ruin my life. But I Excellent. listen. Let's go get her, John. She's got to go for one of us if she's bisexual. Okay. I mean, we are like bisexual Avengers. We're like a bisexual superheroes, right? Let's go. This I'm is not, a, this I, is a I, job I'm made actually, for us. Yeah, I'm not bisexual. I'm confused, but I mean, I'm I'm with you all the no, way. No, you're I not. Suppose. But I'm. She is. So she would go for you or me. Is my point, John? God, right? Get with the but program and get in, in there. just get in your spandex and hush up. Throw Hal in there too. Okay. See, yes, if, we'll bring if the Hal. Three of you can. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I, I, it's really, really disappointing. And I know she takes a lot of money from the insurance industry, just like Manchin takes a lot of money from the coal industry. But yeah. and I'd rather have I'd rather have a moderate Democrat representing those states than another racist fascist Republican. I know. But, but we've worked so hard. We've them. worked so hard to yeah. flip the House, the Senate, the White House, despite incredible voter suppression. I'm trying to destroy the post office. Right. To have two senators stop us from getting things that have 75 percent of, of, of americans approval it really is imagine uh, you got imagine you get the 15 dollars minimum wage now by 2022 you'll see and the, and the third vaccine comes out next week yeah. so that by the midterms 2022 no one's wearing masks covid's a thing of the past and literally millions may have been lifted out of poverty by then which might make them inclined to come vote 
I yeah. mean, there it's like this is a chance to really actually have a Democratic Party that helps people yeah. instead of talking about how much they wish they could help people. But those darn Republicans, it's yeah. got to happen. Yeah, we're going to do it, John. Listen, you and I have had angry sex before. It's the best. Let's. Uh, I, and we have. Well, you were angry, but yeah. Well, didn't, didn't end up angry. OK, love you, John. See you. Thanks, John. Thank you all. Have a beautiful weekend. And thank you, Mooks. You too. See you soon. Love you. Bye. See you, got mm-hmm. it. Bye. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Oh, 49 my minutes after the hour.